first at four, breaking news. We've just heard from Macomb prosecuting attorney Eric Smith about a police search at his office. His response is new at four. A Colorado manhunt comes to a deadly ending. The FBI was searching for this woman. She was accused of making threats against schools and armed with a shotgun. I'll tell you how it ended. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. Let's start first at four with this breaking news from the trial of a former state trooper charged in the tasing death of a teenager. This was Mark Bessner's second trial after the first jury could not reach a verdict. Well, today it is a different story. Let's go live to Coco McAvoy, who is at the courthouse. Coco. Karen, former MSP trooper Mark Bessner was charged with second degree murder, but he was found guilty in court this afternoon of the lesser charge, involuntary manslaughter. Now this verdict comes nearly two years in the making. Let's take a listen to that verdict. In the matter of people versus Mark Lynn Bessner, how do you find the defendant? Guilty of the lesser offense of count two, involuntary manslaughter. Now, this verdict comes after nearly two years in the making. This incident stems from August of 2017, when 15-year-old Damon Grimes was riding his ATV on Detroit's east side. MSP trooper Mark Bessner at the time tased Damon Grimes while he was on his ATV. Now, we have reaction from Michigan State Police, from the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, and also from the family of Bessner. You're not going to want to miss this at 5. They were not at all happy with the verdict. Back to you. All right, we'll check with you at 5. Thank you, Coco. We do have some more breaking news from Macomb County as Prosecutor Eric Smith is now responding after state police executed a search warrant at his office earlier today. Now, the search is in connection with an ongoing investigation into the way money from forfeiture funds was used by Smith's office. Speaking less than an hour ago, Smith says he's happy his office was raided. I'm very happy that for, for months now we've had to hear about how this check was that and that check was that. Well, finally we get a chance to talk to the state police, guys that, that wrote the book on how to spend money on, state, on, on forfeitures. So we're happy about this, and uh, I'm afraid that... Have you been interviewed know. by them yet? What do you make of the FBI on your case now as well? As you can see, he didn't stick around to answer any of those questions. This afternoon, we have not learned what documents were seized during the raid. We're still working the story. We'll have more tonight at 5. And a very busy news day, breaking news this time on I-75 in Troy. Take a look at what happened there. The southbound side over Maple is down to one lane, and that's because a semi-truck hit the guardrail. MDOT expects the expressway to stay that way for hours because of the damage to that guardrail. And that was the area that was under construction. 30 years in prison, that was the sentence handed down today for a St. Clair Shores man in connection with the death of his girlfriend in Detroit. Danielle Michalak pleaded no contest in connection to the stabbing death of Tia Felucci. Investigators say Felucci was left for dead in an MGM Grand Hotel room back in November. In court today, Wendy Felucci spoke to the court, delivering an emotional message to her daughter's killer. There is now an emptiness that lies within my heart now that she's gone. Her death haunts me every day and well for the rest of my life. Since her daughter's death, Vellucci has been raising money for domestic violence shelters, hoping to help other families in crisis. The measles outbreak in Metro Detroit is still growing this afternoon. Two new cases have been confirmed. For the first time, one patient is in the city of Detroit. The other new case in Oakland County. So that brings the total number of confirmed measles cases in Metro Detroit to 42. There's also a new list of possible exposure locations. This keeps changing day to day, so you definitely want to check the list. It includes spots in Oak Park and as far away as Ingham and Kent counties. So if you're not vaccinated, you might have some concerns, you definitely want to check the list at clickondetroit.com. Let's take a look at our first forecast and we were hoping to avoid more rain and we are about to see things warm up. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Karen, it is so close. You look just down to the south, and it's just a ton of 70s sitting down there waiting for us to welcome those in, but it's going to be tomorrow before that happens. Uh, we're stuck in the 50s today. It's seen a decent amount of clouds, but for the most part, we've stayed dry until just about the last hour or so. 
Four Live Radar is starting to show some light showers just like yesterday. These are all pretty much north of 69. There have been a couple lightning strikes out there further to the west too, so we're going to keep our eyes on that. But we've got much better chances of rain and thunderstorms tomorrow coming with those 70 degree temperatures. We'll see if we carry any of that into the holiday weekend in just a few minutes. Karen? Back with you. Thank you, Ben. Breaking news out of Colorado. The young woman wanted for a Columbine school threat is dead. The FBI found Sol Pays dead in the mountains about an hour outside of Denver. They say she shot herself. The 18-year-old from Miami had a reported infatuation with the Columbine school shooting. Police say she flew to Colorado Monday night, bought a shotgun and ammo, and then just disappeared off the radar. At least 19 school districts closed today because of that threat. A school security official had a message for people all around the world. We're not a place to come visit if you're not a student. If you don't have business there, um, we're not a tourist attraction, and we're not a place for you to come and gain inspiration. The district that includes Columbine says schools will return to normal tomorrow, but with increased security. Saturday is the 20th anniversary of the massacre that left 13 people dead. Huge donations are pouring in to rebuild Notre Dame, but will it be enough? The country of France is still mourning with church bells ringing in solidarity two days after that devastating fire. As of today, nearly $1 billion in donations have been raised to rebuild, but some estimates say the project could cost twice as much. France's president is hoping repairs can be done in five years in time for the 2024 Olympics in Paris. Others say it could take much longer, as long as 15 years. Right now, Notre Dame's rector says the church will probably be closed for five or six years. So far, the cause remains under investigation. Notre Dame was undergoing renovations, and there has been speculation something went wrong, which may have caused that fire. And that's not confirmed, but the possibility is changing renovation plans for a historic Detroit church. Everyone suddenly much more aware of the possible risks to irreplaceable items. So for that, let's go live to St. Anne's Church in Detroit with that story. Paula, what's going on? Well, first of all, I want you to take a look at this church because it is something to see. It is definitely a place where art, architecture, history, and religion all reside. Many of the great families of Detroit, names we see on street signs, sat in these pews, Bobian, Campo, Grosbeck. But I want to show you these paintings right here because they depict the life of Jesus Christ through his crucifixion. They are painted into the structure of the building, which means protecting them during an upcoming renovation will be paramount. The last 48 hours have changed the way Monsignor Chuck Kosenke sees his well, church. You know, these are things we obviously don't want damaged or, or, or lost is, is the point. Yes, yeah. St. Anne's de Detroit Church on Detroit's southwest side is the second oldest church in the nation, built in 1818. The architectural artifacts are stunning. 14 carvings of the Stations of the Cross that date back to 1886. An original communion rail that pays homage to the origins of Jesus in Hebrew. Nearly 100 individual stained glass windows and a most precious relic that predates Jesus Christ, a bone fragment from his grandmother, St. Anne. Here you have the Bobian family. Mm -hmm. Over here you have the Campo family. There is water damage uh, throughout the church. Yeah. The wiring is antiquated. The roof must be repaired. And a campaign to raise monies for a complete renovation kicks off this summer. The original estimate, $20 million, but that was 48 hours ago. So what do you do with the bell? <laughs> you have to get a crane. <laughs> You're asking questions we haven't even considered yet, but it's but this is stuff you're thinking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now a new plan is being formulated. The relic will be the first to leave the parish. The stations of the cross will have to be dismantled and removed. Would you have done that before? Probably not. Wow. So, the, the, so this is a lesson for you. So this recent tragedy is a lesson for us. Fire retardant drop cloths in the thousands of yards will have to be laid to protect those items that can't be moved. You know, there's a human factor, right? You know, someone is not paying attention, someone makes a mistake. Extremely nervous and it just highlights how careful, um, you know, contractors have to be. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I, I have a tremendous responsibility here given the history of this church to the Archdiocese of Detroit, the city of Detroit, uh, that this is a huge responsibility that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very aware of how careful we have to be.
Yeah, and you, they're still trying to figure out how they can protect those paintings up there. You could see that even as we were asking questions about what changes, the answer for the Monsignor was basically everything changes in terms of this, of this renovation plan. So much to think about, Paul, in such a beautiful church. Thank you. President Trump's attorney is ready to challenge any new revelations in the Robert Mueller Russia report. The full redacted report is set to be released tomorrow. So far, we've only seen a four-page summary from Attorney General William Barr. The president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, says his legal team will release a rebuttal in the hours after the Mueller report comes out. He expects it will be dozens of pages long. The Mueller report is about 400 pages in perspective there. We do have a lot to go through, and we'll have highlights from both tomorrow at 4. Still ahead, first at 4, a nut allergy alert. The makers of a popular ice cream are recalling two flavors because of undeclared ingredients. You definitely need to know about this. And Boeing making progress to fix the 737 MAX 8. But summer travelers, your plans still may be affected. And later, so many college students and so much debt. Is it all worth it? What graduates are saying and one of their biggest regrets about the college experience might surprise you. 7800. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. An update to a story we brought to you last week about Eddie Rulo, who needed your help because of a situation with his landscaping business. And boy, did you help. The city of Detroit says the number of water shutoffs is lower than in recent years. We'll tell you why. All right, Coco. Well, Boeing has reached a one key milestone as it tries to get its 737 MAX 8 jets back in the air. A panel at the FAA has found a software update for those planes is, quote, operationally suitable. The software is designed to upgrade the MCAS system linked to two deadly crashes. It's a big step, though, but the report recommends more computer-based training for pilots before they're allowed to fly. Right now, they're not requiring the training to be done in a simulator. Final approval, still far off, which means your summer travel could be affected with fewer seats available and, as you guessed, possibly higher fares. Well, the maker of Ben & Jerry's is recalling two types of ice cream because of allergy concerns. We're talking about certain pints of Chunky Monkey with best buy dates of August 28th, 29th, and 30th. And coconut seven layer bar bulk ice cream sold in tubs with a best of date by September 15th. Both could contain tree nuts, which including almonds, Brazil nuts, and hazelnuts that are not listed on that label. So that could cause some severe reactions for some people. Fortunately, so far, no reactions have been reported. You can review that information and share with friends at clickondetroit.com. Look on the Help Me Hank page. Talking about that ice cream makes me feel it's summer, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it tomorrow. feel like, oh, it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Go outside, maybe have you a scoop, but I'll tell you, it's not going to be the whole day that we'll get to enjoy it. So some key hours. Yeah, we're going to have to be very judicious. In, <laughs> in our ice cream sun enjoying. Exactly. <laughs> uh, current temperatures outside are in the 50s and even some 40s. So this is uh, not what we bargained for as far as temperatures go. This is below average, even for this time of year, which those normals are now in the 60s uh, as we head into the later parts of April. So you can see whenever we get the blue edges on the temperature map, uh, that's indicative of an east wind. And watch this on the satellite. This is the visible satellite here at 10 a.m. And watch what happens with this east wind. I mean, just pushes those clouds out to the west, uh, at least the lower clouds. And then you can see the higher stuff start to migrate in from the southwest as the afternoon goes on. And now those clouds getting a little bit more uh, cumulus based out there uh, around Saginaw in the central part of the state. That's where the showers and even some thunderstorms are hanging out. And they're just starting to reach their tentacles into the north zone, as we showed you at the top of the show. Uh, so most of that rain should be confined to north of I-69. Don't be surprised if you get wet in parts of the west zone as well as we get into the evening. But a lot of us are going to miss out on the rain completely tonight, at least. Not so much tomorrow. We've got multiple chances of getting wet on Thursday, and we'll start you in the morning. I think the morning commute's going to be fine, but there's a small chance that we could see a shower or a thunderstorm as we head towards the late morning, heading into the lunch hour. That's the, the lowest chance. The better shot is going to be when this front gets through here in the afternoon. Afternoon. So about 2, 3 o'clock could see a line of showers and thunderstorms. Then this cold front just sort of hangs here as we get into Friday. So that's going to be the focal point depending on how many waves and 
how that sort of undulates around the area. Timing the rain beyond that is going to be pretty tough. Nevertheless, Friday morning looks like we'll see some rain, possibly dry conditions in the afternoon. And then Saturday, this thing could bubble back as we head into the second half of Saturday. So changes in the weekend forecast. We'll get to that in a minute, but 49 tonight, cloudy skies. We're going to be warming late. That's going to be a midnight low. So by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we're going to be starting the day right around 60 degrees, and then we're going to move into the 70s for some of us as we head into the afternoon. Now, this is really uh, in, uh, indicative of when those thunderstorms are coming through. If they do show up a few hours late, we may get a lot higher than 71 for an official high. South zone, we're going to see some 70s here too, maybe upper 60s out there in Lenawee County. Not everybody's going to peak at 70, especially if you're further north uh, in Genesee and Livingston County. Mid to upper 60s is about as good as you're going to do and north zone. We'll see some 70s there as well. Temperatures cooling as we go into the weekend right now. Easter looking not too bad. Maybe a sprinkle and a warmer high of 67. Karen? Looking forward to that. Thank you, Ben. Trending stories next. We do have a warning for Marvel movie fans after some top secret information is leaked. Don't worry. We're not going to spoil anything, but we're going to tell you what to look out for. Also, they are the biggest pop culture phenomenon on the planet right now. You will get a peek at the video seen by more than 150 million people when we come back. Come. In today's trending stories, we know people spend a lot of money on college and many up end up with those huge loans. So the question is, is it all worth it? A new bank rate survey shows college graduates are divided with 58% saying yes, 42% say no. But most agree they wouldn't have their current job without their degree. 88% say they don't regret their overall college experience. You know what they regret, Ben? 20% say they wish they had studied harder. I think we all do, don't we? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think in perspective, it's your one chance at like freedom the first time in your life. So you sometimes we were don't so young. Daddy is hard. Now we're so mature. Yeah. Marvel fans, beware. Now we're not going to spoil anything for you, but leaked footage from the new movie Avengers: Endgame is circulating online. The directors are warning fans to stay away from social media as much as you can, and if you see something, keep it to yourself. The leaked clip is being described as quote spoiler heavy screenshots gifts and short clips are popping up on Twitter and Reddit. The movie is in theaters next Thursday, April 25th. Meantime, seems like everybody is watching the new music video from the South Korean boy band BTS. You may have seen them on Saturday Night Live last week. Their new video is setting a new record on YouTube. If you're wondering what it's all about, here's a clip. By the way, that's American pop star Halsley dancing with BTS. Their management company says the video was the fastest to reach 100 million views. There are already 3 million pre-orders for the new album. Nothing makes me feel older than not recognizing pop music. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who those kids are. I, you know what, I had to like double check on the pronunciation of Halsey. Because I was like, is it? Yeah, I know. We're, I'm with you. Well, I know, we're in the same boat there, Ben. Still ahead, how much do you pay for a good bottle of wine? Uh-oh, this is for a story for Ben again. You're not going to believe what one winery is charging. And wait until you hear what it takes to make just one bottle. That's coming up next. It's a new club where these young ladies are learning about self-esteem, independence, and girl power. If we could just reach one girl, one girl could pass on the information to someone else. So that's how we make a difference, just by being in their lives. Important lessons they're getting outside of the classroom. Just believe in yourself and don't let no one put you down. Meet these young ladies from Detroit who call themselves the Emerging Opals and the volunteers making it all possible. We want to do something specifically for the girls. The story tonight at 5. At 5, Mike wins. Well, if you are used to paying a few bucks for wine, like two buck chuck at Trader's jo Trader Joe's, well, this story will definitely give you some sticker shock. Yeah, a winemaker in Hungary now claiming to sell the world's most expensive wine upon release, not for auction. He is charging $40,000 a bottle. No, it costs so much because it's very labor intensive. The grapes are picked one by one for a harvest of only 20 pounds in a good year, and it takes 2,000 pounds to make one bottle of wine. So we're told the French king Louis XIV said it was the wine of kings and the king of wines. 
But let's just say you pay 40 grand and then you drink it and like you don't like it. That's a weird color too. Yeah, look yeah, at that. It looks thing. like a bourbon. I think I'm going to save my $40,000. Hard pass on that. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us first and four. We're back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5 Inside Edition coming your way next.